contrary to what it might seem at first glance, this gospel is not about what we give to God and what we give to Caesar, or what we owe to God and what we owe to Caesar, or any of the other variations on that. If we think very carefully about this, it is the exact opposite. The question that was put before us now is, to whom do we belong? Whose image do we bear? When coins were minted in the ancient times, and actually it is still that way today, a metal lamp of a certain size and a certain weight is stamped, hammered with the image on that coin. And, of course, civil coins, because they claim the state claims everything for itself anyway. The uh, Caesar is lord of all his domain, but we have a different lord. So, while his image is stamped on what belongs to him. In baptism, the Lord's image is stamped on us. So he claims us as his own. We speak of the sacramental seal. You remember that way back when in catechism? I don't know if they still teach that. I hope they do. But the sacramental seal, baptism and confirmation, both give a sacramental seal. That seal is the image of Christ indelibly stamped on us. So the question is, we already belong to Christ. What are we doing about it? How do we live his image that is already indelibly stamped in us. Not just on us, but just like on a coin, in us. Can't help but think that Geoffrey Chaucer asked and tried to answer that same question. Because he, as we, looked around and saw all kinds of people, all of them stamped with the image of Christ in their baptism. And the question that pervades the Canterbury Tales, I hope I'm right, Dolores, <laughs> the question that pervades the Canterbury Tales is, how are they living? How are they actually living in accord with the Christ that, to whom they already belong. Actually, one thing that Dolores has discovered and teased out of the Canterbury Tales is the real question was, how well is the church living its identity? Because there was an awful lot of corruption violence, uh, uh, mistrust, alienation, domination within the church and with the struggle of the church with the earthly power. And in Chaucer's day, some might perhaps question in our own day too, maybe the church doesn't seem to be doing as well as it should because we are all sinners. But the fact of the matter is we still have the image of Christ stamped indelibly in us. And we still have to reflect upon that call that is given to each of us. How well 
through our lives, our words, our actions, our relationship with others, our ways of dealing with the ways of the world, how well does that conform to the image of Christ that we bear?